Hey, welcome to this go around of STV. On this week's show, the Dragon is still in the shop getting a rear suspension swap finished up. Then we've got the Polaris Indy 600 SP hitting the trails for first burn. And we catch up with the boys from Grizzly Lodge about one of their special guests. But first, Pat's got a look at Polaris's new Evo sled. So you better stick around. STD has been brought to you by Yamaha. Conquer snow with Yamaha. Ford F-Series, Canada's best-selling line of trucks for 52 years. Tough, smart, capable. Kimpex, fueled by fun. Hey gang, in January, Polaris got the 2019 ball rolling early with their brand new Polaris Indy Devo. They even handed out these Devo hats. A little snug. What's that? It's an Evo? E-V-O. E oh, right, yeah, Evo, I knew that, got it. The brand new Indy Evo. It's smaller, lower, has less power, and it's targeted for new riders. Can I get an amen? Next time. Ever since the sport took off, manufacturers have been looking for ways to attract new riders. Sleds like the Skidoo Freestyle, the Articat Lynx, the Polaris Indy Light, and the Yamaha Inviter all took a shot. Hey, hey you, wanna try snowmobiling? Yeah! But more recently, the need to get new blood in the sport has become increasingly important. Bring in the Evo. So what the heck is an Indy Evo? Well, it's a really cool idea. You know, we have been looking, trying to crack the code on this, this gap sled, the sled that's in between full size and yard sleds for a long time. And it's really challenging to get the right level of performance and the right level of size. And we feel like we really did it. We figured out how to get all those things to come together at the right price for that, that new rider. And that's really what this is designed for, is somebody who is new to snowmobiling or a smaller person where a full-size sled is a little bit intimidating. When a lot of new riders get introduced to snowmobiling through the used market, and those old sleds that people really love, like an Indy Light, you know, we've sold a lot of them and it's a very popular used machine, but the ergonomics of those machines are completely wrong. You know, you're riding in the back seat, you're low and the knees are in your elbows. And what's really interesting is you put this next to an uh, Indy Light, and you see in most dimensions it's actually smaller than an Indy Light, but the seat height is taller, and we do that for a reason, because that ergonomics package is better. Easier transition to standing, your, your legs can take more of a load, it's just a way better way to ride a snowmobile. And we think that's a better experience for somebody who's new than to put them on something that's really out of date. I, I was talking when I introduced the sled about this test rider that we have, so her name is Maddie, and she's she's a test rider in Rozo, and she's relatively new to snowmobiling. We we hired her on purpose to give to just uh, get the experience from somebody who really was in that place, really weren't a snowmobiler. So Maddie, tell me about yourself. Yeah, what's I'm your, about five three. So enough about you. Let's talk about the Evo. I think new riders will really like how um, much smaller it is. I, I have a lot more confidence on it. Um, I've rode some of the stock 550 Indies and those are a lot bigger and higher and I would go a lot more places on the Indy Evo just because um, of my confidence level. The other cool thing about the Indy Evo, it's like a snowmobile transformer. <laughs> Part of the, the idea here was that we didn't have, a, we didn't want a machine that was kind of a grow out of it or throw away. And, and we, we did a lot of really careful research on this over a long period of time. We built countless prototypes of this, we all different kinds of concepts. 
And what we settled on was something that where you you could uh, introduce it to somebody who was new with with the right amount of power, the compact ergonomics, the low stance, but then over time you could actually add the suspension capability back in, that increase the center of gravity, again, make them wider, add power if you want to, so that you've got a machine that has full power. Spot, Warp Factor 2. Hey, can we get a second opinion? Well, all we have right now is a 550, you know, but I see a lot of my customers trying to find a used one, especially Indy Lights or Indy 340s, those old ones there. Um, they're still in high demand, and this is going to fit that bill really well. So how much will the Indy Evo cost? Try $52.99 in the U.S. and $64.99 in Canada. Dollars? Dang! The new 2019 Polaris Indy Evo. It's sized right, powered right, priced right and arriving at a Polaris dealership near you before next winter. Dang! Carbide wear bars do just that. They wear out. It's just part of being a snowmobiler. And when it comes to replacing them, there's a ton of choices in the aftermarket. And to help tell us about one of those choices, Clark from Bergstrom Skeggs is here to tell us about it. Bergstrom Skaggs is, um, is a company that's been running since well into the early 70s. Um, specializing in the steering and handling and control products for all the different OEM snowmobiles and aftermarket ski products. Um, changing the profiles of the skis to the snow and branching off into two different lines of carbides, both our Good and Ugly line, which is a single point carbide, and our triple point carbides, um, giving you three different points of carbide on each ski. We have a website-based company. Um, if you call any of our toll-free numbers that are on the website, you're directed to either deal south of the border or north of the border based on your address. There's a parts list manifest that's available on our website that'll help you go from the year, make, and model. Um, and there's also a um, manifest there to help you with any of the aftermarket products or any one of our salespeople can help direct you on what it is that you need for your snowmobile. So what we're trying to do is address the original problem that most of the OEMs carry right from the very beginning, and that's a darting and handling issue. So all we're doing with our products is changing the weight transfer from where the problem is back to where it should be, and that's underneath the spindle of the snowmobile by using a shim kit um, to better help direct the ski down the trail. So for the kit we have today for the Yamaha Sidewinder, we're going to use a eight inch triple point package that will address the center keel of the snowmobile. And then we'll be running a four inch good and ugly on the outside of the two or three ski with a full shim kit package to change the weight transfer of the snowmobile. So with the two or three ski, um, it suffers from a lot of friction and lift because of the way the keels are positioned on the bottom of the ski. So what we do is we add a ski saver that goes with the bottom of our carbide, which lengthens both of those keels, which helps give a little bit more bite and filter through some of the, the lift and some of the friction that's gonna come through the center of those two ski keels um, and give you the bite that you're requiring to need the better the handling. It allows us to dictate the depth of the host bar to the snow. Um, and it also promotes wear on our product, which is an interchangeable product uh, per season versus the wear on your skis. So your average rider in, in, in usual conditions um, should see minimum two seasons uh, per set of rods. And you should be looking at considering replacing those ski savers at the end of each season. We're the only um, provider on the market with the triple point system. So that's you know our biggest seller at this point and what gets our most attention is because we offer something that no one else can. And as time progresses, um, we are going to be able to offer you a replacement rubber, um, which will have an integrated shim kit to it to promote the exact science and the physics that we're looking to create with our product. So you'll be able to take out your OEM rubber and add our rubber that will be already shimmed out um, to make uh, easier installation. And we also have a line of screw and stud products called our trail grabbers as well. You know, you can take the most uh, advanced machine you can buy and without being able to handle it, um, it can really ruin your day on the trail. Um, you want to be able to go down the trail and drive it, not have it drive you. And it's a love for the sport. Um, it's a love for helping the consumer um, get better value out of the, the money they've invested into their machine. High-end models like Polaris's XCR and Assault models are pretty easy to talk about because they generate a ton of marketing sizzle. But because of this, they tend to overshadow some of the other sleds that might be hanging out in the back of the Polaris lineup. Sleds like the Polaris Indy 600 SP.
The 600 SP sure isn't the first sled you think about when Polaris sleds are brought up in the conversation, because it just seems to be one of the other models that's there only to flesh out the lineup. But with just one ride, you realize that this Indy is really something special because it's simply a fun sled to ride. This machine is right at home on the trails. Its low-slung chassis and somewhat less aggressive one-inch hacksaw track balance out together to produce a ride with just enough oversteer to put a smile on your face from the first turn of the day all the way to the last. Out front is Polaris's race-proven front suspension with Pro Steer Ski Package, held up with simple but very effective Fox IFP shocks. This setup serves up predictable grip in all kinds of snow conditions without any excessive inside ski lift. Paired up out back is the more traditional Indy coupled rear suspension, again with the Fox IFP shocks. The track length is also just 121 inches, which is on the short side by today's standards, but works extremely well in this package. Keeping everything working the way it should is Polaris's ProRide chassis that's 300% stiffer. Just not really sure what it's 300% more stiffer than, but in any case it's this chassis that allows the suspension to do its job without having to deal with any unwanted chassis flex influencing the ride. Basically, the chassis plays a big part in why this machine is so predictable and so much fun to ride. Every one of the crew jockeys to ride this sled, in large part because of its fun factor. Now carving up the trails with just enough sliding around, the 600 Clean Fire engine has no issue keeping up with any other sled. In fact, it's so good, it's not surprising that the 600 can actually set the pace in front of much more powerful sleds with much fancier suspensions. It's not till the trails really start to get whooped out that the suspension starts to show its limitations, or not surprisingly, when the ski tips point to a wide open run across a lake where the power of the large displacement sleds can outpull the 600. From the cockpit, the ergonomics are again balanced to serve up a very Polaris type of ride. From a seat that's wide towards the rear but tapers aggressively towards the tank, and then up to a set of handlebars that are flat with very light feeling controls. It should also be mentioned that the Indy represents a more stripped down, lower cost sled. The Indy line starts with a 550 fan and the SP model we have here is the top of the line. There's also a base 600 that strips off things like a riser style handlebar and Fox shocks for a set of ride effects. But one option I wish the SP did have is an electrical fuel gauge. This mechanical gauge just annoys me, plus I think Polaris has been using the exact same model for the last 40 years. But small gripes aside, the Polaris Indy 600 SP is one heck of a snowmobile for a great value. And what it does best is serve up plenty of snowmobiling fun, really what snowmobiling should be all about. The Indy 600 SP is a powerful, light-feeling sled that isn't intimidating like some of its big brothers can be. Now it's not that the Indy should be seen as a starter sled, although it can make a great one, or a sled just for sightseeing, because the 600 can step up the pace when it needs to. The Indy 600 SP is a sled right at home on any trail, with anybody, anywhere. This thing, it's a honey. A little while ago, we did a show from the Grizzly Lodge that's located in the Shuswap Mountains of BC, but there was one part of that story that we ran out of time to tell you about in that show, so I wanted to take the opportunity in this show to tell you about it. And here it is. So, Grizzly Lodge has got a guest that comes up a couple times a year, and you may have heard of him, it's called Chris Barant. So, How's that working for you guys? You got a, you know, it's a, Chris is a fairly big name in the snowmobile world. Yeah, he's he's kind of up there in, in that realm of things. Uh, Chris started coming here about five years ago, and right from the first trip he did here, he was like, wow, we need to talk and we need to maybe do some business because uh, he really liked the terrain, the lodge, the whole setting. So now he's coming uh, twice a year. He does a week in December and a week in April and uh, people come, get to ride with him and his guys and experience the lodge along with that and it's, it's become really popular. Yeah, what kind of things are you, uh, the, the people that are coming in for that experience, what are they experiencing with him? Yeah, um, well, they're experiencing 
Chris's style of riding, I guess you could say. <laughs> I mean, guys come with uh, different expectations and uh, there's a lot of guys that show up thinking they're pretty, uh, pretty damn good riders. And uh, Chris really enjoys that because he likes uh, showing them that maybe they aren't quite at the level they are. Um, and then there's then there's the guys that aren't great riders and they want to learn some stuff and they can yeah. pick up a lot of uh, tips and tricks that obviously Chris is really fantastic at. And Chris is really kind of one of the innovators of the terrain riding style, tree riding. You know, that's it's kind of his his thing. Yeah, yeah um, it's definitely the boondocking type tree riding style uh, has kind of been birthed out of Chris Brandt's uh, style and him really pushing the sport that direction. Not that there isn't lots of other good riders out there oh, that yeah. are fantastic backcountry riders, but Chris has really uh, taken it forward with his passion and, and with his business around Brandt's backcountry adventure that uh, it's, it's gone wild, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah. And uh, if somebody wants to to be part of that, what do they have to do? do they how, how far in advance do you need to book? Is this something that books up early? You know, how quickly do people have to get on that if they want to get into it? Uh, earlier is better. Um, they, they do book up, they usually sell out, uh, but either contact BBA and get a hold of Ryan and book in through there, or give us a call and uh, we'll tell you the dates and what's available and get you set up. Yeah. yeah. It's a popular trip. A lot, of, a lot of people like to come and do that. And April is the one that's coming up for you guys. Yeah, there's still a few spots left in April. Uh, it's about the second week in April, somewhere in there. And there's still a few spots left. So if you're interested in coming, make her happen. There you go. If you can get out here, you can ride with Chris Barrett too. That's right. Awesome this morning. Uh, got picked up by a helicopter and got to go fly the zone we've been riding. I've been actually riding this area for about four years now, and so cool to see. Uh, just just when you think you've you've seen it all, uh, you know, a little flight uh, with the helicopter really exposes all the areas that we haven't even touched yet. And so, pretty fun. Uh, we're gonna go ride today, and uh, man, t-shirt weather in springtime at Grizzly Lodge it doesn't get any better. wrapping up seven epic days up here in April at Grizzly Lodge. Um, this truly has been uh, some of the best riding that I've got to do. You know, I just, I love these conditions. Um, the snow's soft, the weather was super nice, really warm, um, and then sunlight until 7.30 at night. And uh, it was awesome riding with uh, people from all over Canada and the US. A lot of guys drove up here, which is crazy. Um, and just an epic time. So. Uh, make sure you reserve your spots. Uh, we do two uh, time slots throughout the year, one in December and one in April. Um, get your butt up here and enjoy uh, Grizzly Lodge with us. Hi, I'm Larry Enticer. Welcome to another installment of Lawn Ornaments, where viewers submit their finds of snowmobiles left behind. Let's take a look at today's winner. Today we got a picture from Gordon Vincent. I mean, like, I don't know what happened here. Tornado went through, we got a shed blown down in the back. Sleds all up on their sides. I don't know if he's working on the things. He must have been changing those nice blue ski sliders. They look good, but 
got a tarp over the other one. Seats are falling off, but I think they're still going to keep running. Got to be if they're Yamaha. Well, Gord, that's all we got for you. Thanks. I'm going to send you this t-shirt so you can keep on sending it. Last time around on Shop Hustle, we were in the process of rebuilding the used 136-inch skid frame for the Polaris Dragon. That's been done, so all that's left to do is change out the track. Luckily, I've done it on this machine once already this year, so there shouldn't be any surprises. I hope. The skid is already out, so it's time to remove the drive axle and everything in the way of accomplishing that task. So while that's happening, I want to tell you about the track I've chosen for the upgrade. Camso offered to supply the new track for this change to 136 and to help figure out which track would be right for the sled and the way I ride, we'd use the selection tool on Camso's website. This tool steps through all the different tracks Camso has to offer, but also matches those offerings to what fits on your sled. After you input the make and model you're searching for, along with your riding segment, style and definition, the selection tool will punch out the Camso track that works best in all your preferred categories. In addition, the suggested tracks have ratings for things like traction and flotation to help identify the strengths of each result. From there, it's just a matter of deciding which track looks best for you. We went with the Cobra track option with 1.4 inch lugs. This track has great versatility, which is good for where I ride and the changing snow conditions. Beyond that, through the use of the selection tool, I know for a fact that the track will be a perfect fit for the now switchback Dragon, which, aside from drilling some new holes in the tunnel, is all stock Polaris. Camso calls themselves a road-free company, which means they specialize in products where rubber meets everything but the road. From forklift tires to ag tracks to snow bikes to your sled, they use this engineering knowledge and corporate power to develop products. By count, Camso has over 30 snowmobile tracks for every type of rider and riding style. Well, with the new 136-inch skid frame installed and the new track, this dragon is ready to ride once I build a little tunnel extension to hold the snow flap. Or maybe I won't. This will be cool. Nobody's going to ride behind me. Hey, thanks for tuning in this week. But if you want more STV, be sure to check us out on social media where you can see what's happening behind the scenes to cast and crew or just to watch the show. So until next week, keep the rubber side down. Actually, get the f out because it's distracting me. Oh, okay. Go back out to where it's cold. Wow, you should have seen the defeat in Logan's face. He couldn't <laughs> stay. Did you just call me an a?